Welcome back to Money Girl. My name is Laura Adams. If you're new here, I'm an award-winning personal finance author who's been writing and hosting the show since 2008. My mission is to help you get the knowledge and motivation to prioritize your finances, build lots of wealth, and have more security and less stress. When I'm not podcasting, I work with brands as their on-camera spokesperson, PR consultant, and multimedia content creator. If you want to learn more about my books, money courses, or even how to work with me, visit my personal website, lauradadams.com. I hope you and your career are doing great. But today, we're going to talk about what to do if you decide to leave your job or you get laid off. And before we get started, if you're enjoying Money Girl, take a moment to subscribe, give it a five-star rating or review so we know you're getting value from this free content. This topic came up because recently there have been some layoffs at well-known companies. And if you've ever been laid off or terminated from a job, you know how upsetting and disorienting it can be. Understandably, you might feel blindsided and not think clearly when it happens. I remember getting fired from one of my first jobs with a small company after it lost its largest customer, leaving it much less profitable. While it wasn't my fault that the company needed to shed expenses and people quickly, I remember feeling terrible and unsure about what I was going to do next. So even if your career or job situation is stable, it's essential to be prepared for the unexpected and avoid costly mistakes if the worst happens. In addition to dealing with layoffs, this show will also cover critical steps if you decide to leave a job. So stay with me to learn more about this important topic. All right, let's get into the nine next steps after getting laid off or leaving your job. Number one is don't sign anything right away. If you get terminated for any reason, the company has likely been doing a lot of legal preparation behind the scenes, and they may ask you to sign certain documents the very same day. Never, ever sign anything when you're caught by surprise or you're just unclear about what's happening. Instead, ask how much time you have to review the paperwork. Take time to carefully review any termination documents when you're calm, you know, when you're just in a different state of mind or you're getting advice from a trusted professional, like a lawyer or even an accountant. Note that the rules for firing an employee vary by state. If you believe you've been wrongfully terminated, you should immediately speak with a labor and employment attorney for guidance. Now, you can negotiate certain factors about your termination, such as severance pay, unused vacation pay, and benefits. So my advice is to definitely get guidance if you need it and ask for much more than you get offered during a termination. So you want to give yourself time, you know, to really review what's being offered and make a plan. Put your requests in writing and then submit them to your company before any signing deadlines that they may have given you. If you voluntarily leave a job, it's always best to secure another opportunity before you resign. Giving two weeks notice is a minimum expectation that you should discuss with your direct manager first. But there is a chance that you could get asked to leave right away. So be prepared for that possibility if you decide to resign. All right, the second step is ask for documentation. If you get terminated for any reason outside of your control, such as changes in economic conditions, mergers, restructuring, etc., ask for documentation that explains the specific circumstances. Then carefully review that layoff or termination letter for accuracy. And don't hesitate to ask for any errors or omissions to get corrected. You also might ask for a termination notice to include significant contributions you or your team made to the company. That could definitely help prospective employers understand that you weren't fired for cause, but you were a valuable employee who got included in a labor reduction. Before you leave an employer voluntarily or due to a layoff, 
ask for written recommendations from your direct manager, maybe your human resources department, and any coworkers that you think could be helpful. That will give you a nice leg up as you start looking for your next job. No matter why you part ways with your company, stay positive and bring as much class to the situation as possible. I know it's not always easy, but remember that moving on is just a part of being a professional and every job adds to your experience and your network. So do your best never to burn any professional bridges. You never know when you might work with the same folks again or may need them to refer you. All right, the next step, number three, is negotiate severance. Depending on your company, your position, and your layoff circumstances, you may get offered a severance package, such as a month or two of pay, unused vacation, and sick time. However, there's usually room to negotiate, especially if you suspect the package is below industry standards or you get help from an experienced labor attorney who can do some negotiating for you. If you ask for extra severance compensation and the company will not agree, request other benefits instead. For instance, they might be more willing to cover your health insurance for additional months or write multiple letters of recommendation. If you receive a final paycheck the same day you get laid off, double check that it's accurate and includes any unused paid time that you're entitled to. And you may need to go back to your employee manual to refresh your memory on, you know, what the policy is. However, for most large layoffs, you might not receive a final paycheck for a couple of months as the company processes a large volume of administrative work. Now, when you voluntarily leave a job, you may have some room to negotiate your exit compensation based on how much the company needs you. For instance, if your company cannot easily replace you, they might pay extra for you to create documentation about your role, or may, they may allow you to be employed until you train a replacement, or even allow you to work part-time over a transition period. And if you do get one or more lump sum severance payments, do your homework to find the best place to keep it, such as a high interest savings account. That will allow your money to earn a little more than regular savings and remain safe and liquid for when you need to spend it. All right, step number four is shop for insurance. After you get laid off or voluntarily leave a job, your benefits, such as health, life, and disability insurance typically end on the last day of the same month. For instance, if you get terminated on the 5th of the month, you likely have coverage through the 30th or the 31st of that same month. Now, unless you work for a small business, you're typically eligible for COBRA continuation coverage for up to 18 months. COBRA allows you to continue the exact same medical, dental, and vision coverage that you may already have. However, you are usually required to pay the entire premium for those coverages, which could be much higher than what you were paying when you were employed because the employer typically pays a portion of that premium for you. So under COBRA, you've got to pay all of it. And that may be, you know, a good bit higher than you're used to. Now, if you get a new job pretty quickly, paying for COBRA for like a month or maybe two just to bridge that coverage gap could make sense. However, if you don't know what your next career move will be and you want to save money, shopping for health and dental plans at healthcare.gov can be the most affordable option. In fact, you may qualify for a substantial premium subsidy based on your expected annual income and family size. Remember that going without health insurance for any period is very, very risky. Even a quick trip to the emergency room for a broken bone or illness could leave you with a massive bill. So make replacing your workplace health plan a top priority after you get laid off or you voluntarily leave a job. You may also need to replace other policies, like life insurance, which also ends at the end of the month you leave a company. And it's really easy to compare life insurance quotes using a comparison site like finder.com. If you've got a 401k or a 403b retirement plan with your former employer, you have multiple options 
that really are not time sensitive. So you can wait to make decisions about your retirement account. That's not a huge priority. The same is true with a health savings account. Um, That's yours to keep and spend even if you don't elect to purchase a high deductible health plan. So, you know, you want to think about your insurance as being your top priority. However, if you have a flexible spending account or FSA balance, you must use or lose your funds as quickly as possible. Unless you qualify for a grace period or you choose COBRA continuation coverage, any employer-paid FSA funds typically go back to the old employer. Okay, step number five, file for unemployment. If the reason you get laid off or fired is not due to, quote, cause, which means something like poor performance or violating company rules, you can apply for unemployment benefits. They replace a portion of your income while you look for your next job. Now, how much unemployment assistance you receive for how long and what requirements that, you know, may be in place, like having to attend career training or having to apply for a certain number of jobs per week, all of that varies by state. So check your state's Department of Labor website for more details to see if you qualify and get some instructions on how to apply. Even if you think you'll find another job quickly, filing for and getting those unemployment benefits can take time. So applying for them right away is definitely worthwhile, just in case your job search takes longer than expected. Most states allow laid-off workers to collect unemployment benefits for up to 26 weeks. However, in some cases, if you receive severance payments, you may not qualify for unemployment until those severance payments stop. And note that if you voluntarily leave a job, you are not eligible for unemployment payments. The purpose of those benefits is to support workers who unexpectedly lose their jobs and income. All right, step number six, evaluate your career goals. While getting laid off may not be what you wanted, it could be the catalyst for starting a new career or even your own business. So before jumping to the fastest job opportunity possible, reflect on your emotions and what you genuinely want from your work and personal life. Taking a career pause could actually be the perfect time to relocate, start a family, go back to school, get training in a promising new industry, or, you know, anything else you can dream of. For example, you could do freelance work related to your old job. In fact, I know a lot of people that end up going back to their old employer that laid them off and work for them as a contractor. Or you might get an advanced degree in your same field. If you make the most of a layoff or termination, you might see it as the best thing that happened to you or as a springboard to a better career and a more secure future. Step number seven, update your resume. If you don't regularly update your resume, now's the time to polish it based on the job you want next. And if you're unsure where to start, consider hiring a career coach or a professional resume writer to help you put your best foot forward. It's okay to show you're unemployed and briefly explain why you got terminated in a resume. For instance, you might say, I was laid off due to corporate downsizing, or I was laid off due to a 10% staff reduction. If your resume highlights your best skills, ambitions, and accomplishments, recruiters won't turn you down just because you got laid off. If you get asked about a termination during a job interview, don't avoid it and don't give a vague answer. You want to be prepared with a brief and honest response about why your previous employer needed to lay off workers maybe due to competition, acquisitions, the economy, or whatever occurred. It's essential to put a positive spin on your termination. For example, let's say you get asked why you left your previous employer. You might say that you were part of a 15% staff reduction, but now are looking forward to finding an opportunity that allows you to work more closely with customers than in your prior role or anything that shows you've got a good attitude and you're excited about moving forward. Step number eight, create job search profiles. 
Once you have an updated resume, you want to use that to create job search profiles on various sites. There's so many good ones out there, certainly LinkedIn, Indeed, Monster, Glassdoor. They automatically match your skills and experience with job openings on their platforms. And you can create helpful alerts for specific opportunities. Maybe you want to search for jobs in a particular pay range, industry, company, or city. Many job recruiters use LinkedIn to find candidates. So refresh your profile there and change the settings to show that you're looking for work. The more descriptive your resume and career profiles are, the more likely you can get discovered by prospective employers. Remember, the algorithms in these platforms are looking for keywords that are in your resume and in your, you know, your profile description. And the last step, number nine, inform your connections. In addition to updating your resume and creating job profiles on career sites, Let your professional contacts and friends know you're looking for an opportunity. Reach out to your closest connections first, maybe by phone or even a video call, to ask for their advice or to get together in person. While networking can feel awkward, think about it as reconnecting with colleagues and friends you care about. Find out what's happening in their lives and their careers first. Then let them know you got laid off but are excited about finding a new opportunity. No one will judge you for having been terminated if you don't dwell on it or have a negative attitude about your previous employer. As always, you can leave a voicemail comment or money question by calling 302-364-0308. Or you can send me an email using my contact page at lauradadams.com. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week. Until then, here's to living a richer life. Money Girl is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Steve Rickyberg with editing by Adam Cecil. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our digital operations specialist is Holly Hutchins. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And our intern is Cameron Lacey.